something that I saw Richard Sherman say a long time ago, and it really stuck with me ever since. And I was like, wow, that is such a great point. It was when he was speaking about the cornerback position in the NFL and really just in general, too, uh, since he did play cornerback and he played it at a very high level as well. Uh, Richard Sherman said that it's a shame with cornerbacks because People will only look at the big plays. Uh, and he said with cornerbacks, they have it tough because you could be locking somebody up all game long. You could be shutting them down. You could be playing defense on them well. But if you give up just one play, one big play, then people will say you had a bad game. And I'm like, man. That is a really, really good point because you hear fans of every team say that all the time about uh, players on their team. Like if they give up one big play, oh, man, that player had a bad game while neglecting everything else that they've done throughout. So that showed me that with Richard Sherman, it's not just about the numbers. And, and really, it's about focusing and actually watching the game to really see how good or even great a player is. But now with what Richard Sherman is saying when it comes to Lamar Jackson and his MVP race it's going directly against that. Team Keep It Clean, we're going to listen to what Richard Sherman, his most recent take on Lamar Jackson not being a good enough candidate to be the MVP and why. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel like y'all have been, which I appreciate a lot. Uh, turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video because it makes a huge, huge difference. I appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean. Without further ado, let's have a listen. No, it did not because the, the fact of the matter remains the same for me. That, that, that didn't move the needle. It was a fantastic performance by Lamar Jackson at a time his team needed it. It was a statement game late in the season in December. You got to give him all the credit in the world. But the five touchdowns in this game against the Miami Dolphins, as crazy as it sounds, Skip, are almost as many as he had in the months of both September and November combined. In those months combined, he had six touchdowns passing. And so when you, when you look at the full picture, I just don't see it. And again, people argue with me and they're like, man, you're just hating. I don't see how I'm hating. I'm just laying out the facts of the matter. If you're you not hating, 30 I'll touchdowns. be the first to say you're not hating. Go ahead. So that's how he started off his argument that Lamar Jackson is not the MVP of the NFL because the number of touchdowns that he had against the Miami Dolphins was the same number of touchdowns that he had in September in November I don't know why he skipped October for some strange reason who knows but that's a like that's some really big time mental gymnastics to really be reaching from September and skipping a month in the, but anyway let's continue I think I, because I think he's a fantastic I thought that was an unbelievable game I thought he played really well against San Francisco I think he's having a really good season it's just when he had his MVP season and it was unanimous so you got to put an asterisk next to that because it was so outstanding that it was he was the first unanimous MVP in the history of the league but he had 36 touchdown passes yep. and then you look at him having 24 this year he had 1200 rushing yards you look at it, he has about 843 or so this year and so I don't see it as the same in that respect and people are like well he should get MVP because of what if the numbers aren't there then there's not much to say people were like they were comparing it to the Peyton Manning season of 2008 I mean, that season, he had six fourth quarter comebacks. Uh, he led the league in QBR. There were things that happened late in that year that, that kind of pushed him over the top, but the stats weren't necessarily there. And again, that was 15 years ago. If I look at the last 20 MVPs of the National Football League, three of them being running backs, you had all day Adrian Peterson, mm -hmm. who had 2,000 yards. You had LaDainian with 31 total touchdowns. You had Sean Alexander with 28 total touchdowns. But outside of that, it's been quarterbacks. And those quarterbacks, there's only been three. Three. And two of them were co-MVPs in 2003, and that was Steve McNair and Peyton Manning. They had 29 total touchdowns for Steve McNair, 28 for Peyton, and they were co-MVPs. And then you have the 2008 Peyton season where he had 28 total touchdowns. And that's it. Everybody else had above 30 touchdowns. And so if you're going to tell me there was an MVP 20 years ago, they, were, they shared it, and then Peyton Manning 15 years ago, out of all the quarterbacks that have won it, and that's it, nobody else has had less than 30 touchdowns in the last decade, in the last two decades, then I'm going to say I would assume they would stick to that pattern. So I guess, skip, uh, but he's the betting favorite. So there's a chance he gets it, but I think it'll be one of the situations where they have to split it because he has under 30 touchdowns. So they split it like they did in 2003 with Steve McNair and Peyton, likely giving it to CMC or Tyreek and, and Lamar because, uh, you know, I guess that's what they're going to do because otherwise I just don't understand. So in that chunk of what Richard Sermon was talking about, he spoke about how Lamar Jackson's MVP season back in 2019, how his numbers were. And I don't know why he said to put an asterisk on it, because usually when you put an asterisk on something, then it's not a good thing or it, it just means that, that it's not fully believable or whatnot or that people can't put all their eggs into whatever that basket is. But anyway, um, and, and it wasn't the first unanimous MVP, by the way. It was only the second unanimous MVP because Tom Brady was the only other person that won the first. But OK, no big deal. But what, what, what Richard Sherman was also talking about um, he talked about the numbers because, again, that has been his big thing, the numbers. But then he compared it to Peyton Manning um, and he talked about how Peyton Manning, he didn't have the best numbers in one of the years that he won MVP. I know Peyton Manning, I think he won it like five times. But anyway, one of the years where Peyton Manning won MVP, his numbers weren't the best. There were some other people who had better or prettier numbers than him. But he talked about how Peyton Manning had like six fourth quarter comebacks and whatnot. So. 
what Richard Sherman did with Peyton Manning, even though he didn't have the prettiest numbers, he said what put him over the top was the context of the game. Not necessarily the numbers, but what Peyton Manning did, Peyton Manning's impact. But see, this is where we get lost with Richard Sherman because with Lamar Jackson, he does not have the prettiest numbers. If this season ended right now for Lamar Jackson, which it seems like it could because I don't really foresee the Baltimore Ravens playing many starters against the Steelers next week, but we'll see. Um, this His numbers are not going to be the prettiest. They're not. Um, but when you look at his impact, if you actually watch the games, watch the Baltimore Ravens play, you cannot deny Lamar Jackson's impact on the game. And that is exactly what Richard Sherman is doing. That is why so many Ravens fans are frustrated with his takes. Like, if he was just sticking to the numbers and that was it, that would be frustrating enough. But it would be, okay, it is what it is. Richard Sherman just going by the numbers. But for him to talk about, to, to bring up Peyton Manning, if he would have never brought that up, then it would have been like, okay, Richard Sherman is still going by it. But no, he brought up Peyton Manning and Peyton Manning's impact on the team one of the years he won MVP. And he talked about how that impact pushed him over the top more than numbers could. But he's not doing the same for Lamar Jackson. We see Lamar Jackson. We see what he does on the field every week. And I think that people just almost take it for granted. Because he does some crazy stuff every single week. But again, you cannot deny his impact. Look at Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens this year. Look at them against the top teams. Look at them against teams that were coming into the game. And it was like, uh-oh, I don't know about Ravens in this one. Uh-oh, Ra Ravens really going to have a tough time in this one. Uh-oh, Ravens going against that team. Uh-oh, I don't know how they're going to fare against them. And Ravens took care of every single one. Every, and they not only took care of every single one, but they did it in a major way. So you cannot deny the impact. You could talk about the numbers. You could talk about the numbers all day. But when it comes to impact, there's no denying it. Let's finish up with Richard Sherman. Okay, just for the record, if, if you had a vote right here, right now, it would go to... Chris McGuff. Okay, one vote for Chris. No split vote. You just give it to Christian. No, I, I'd split it if that's what we had to do. I mean, it's, it's no, closer than it was you before you had five touchdowns. Right. Yeah. You know, he had five touchdowns this right. week. And recency, it, it counts to a degree, but you also have to put the full scope of the picture. So I have to give him credit for what he did against the San Francisco 49ers in a primetime game with the world watching. Right. Played fantastic. And then what he just did against Miami with the number one seed on the line, he played his best football and executed. So I do have to factor that in. And his yardage, his rushing, his impact. So again, Richard Sherman, uh, it just seemed like he might be a bit confused because he said he had to factor everything in his rushing, his yardage, his impact and him going against the Miami Dolphins for the number one seed and him playing his best football when the number one seed was on the line. But he said he would still give his vote to Christian McCaffrey. See, this is why, again, I think it's very important that the games are watched. We saw on December 25th, the 49ers and the Ravens. That was a huge game, huge implications for everything, for both teams and their records and whatnot. A uh, huge game because we were getting to see people, multiple people, multiple uh, people in the MVP race play in the same game. So in that game alone, it was like, okay, man, we, we, they're talking about Brock Purdy as a possible MVP. They're talking about Christian McCaffrey as a possible MVP. They're talking about Lamar Jackson as a possible MVP. Oh, we get to see all of them in the same game. Oh, man, let's see the impact that those guys have. Brock Purdy, ooh, yeah, yeah, it was a big yikes for him in that one. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, he got nice numbers, but even with him getting nice numbers, look at how his team fared. And then you see Lamar Jackson, and look how he performed. Look at how the Baltimore Ravens did. If you take Lamar Jackson out of that equation, that game ain't the same. If you take uh, Christian McCaffrey out of the equation, Game is probably the same, or maybe even worse. You take Brock Purdy out of the equation, maybe the game's a bit closer because Brock Purdy threw four picks, and he almost threw more. But, again, with Richard Sherman, the consistency is the issue. And I know this is the same reason why a lot of Ravens fans are not the biggest fans of Shannon Sharp right now because there's that lack of consistency when they speak about Lamar Jackson. But, like I said back in 2018, and, and I got to continue to say this because we can see with Richard Sherman, this is the case Lamar Jackson, for some people, no matter what he does, no matter what he accomplishes, no matter how good or great he is on the field, he will never, ever be good enough for some people.